Hello everybody. In this video, my goal is so that you will understand why we use the quadratic formula, where it comes from, and how special of a thing it actually is to use. So yesterday you already used the quadratic formula, and you know that the formula looks like this. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And we can use the formula for any quadratic equation as long as it's in standard form. So if we label this one in standard form, a is 1, b is negative 12, c is 10, we should be able to throw these numbers into the formula and get an answer. But let's think back to the lesson that I taught right before the quadratic formula. The lesson right before quadratic formula day is solving quadratic equations by factoring. The only problem with that one is, well, for one thing, you need to know how to factor. And for our second thing, not everything factors easily. For example, this one down here, x squared plus 9x plus 8. If we use our x method, we're going to have an 8 on top, 9 on the bottom. And things that multiply to make 8 could be 4 and 2. But 4 plus 2 doesn't make 9, so let's pick something else. Let's pick 8 and 1. 8 times 1 makes 8. Sorry, 8 plus 1 makes 9. So 8 and 1 are some good factors we could use. x plus 8, x plus 1. This factored version of x squared plus 9x plus 8, these two things are equivalent. And now that we have this factored version, we could set this equal to 0 and solve each factor separately. You would do x plus 8 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. To get that, the two solutions, the two roots to this quadratic equation are negative 1 and x equals negative 8. The purpose of finding those roots is so that way you can know where the x-intercepts are. And if you know where the x-intercepts are, then getting the shape of that parabola is really easy because all parabolas basically have the same shape. So that's why we learned the transformations before we started solving these is because I really wanted you to understand how the shape of a quadratic equation happens. We got that from this, the two roots were at x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 8. That means that on the graph for this parabola of x squared plus 9x plus 8, we should have one x-intercept at x equals negative 1. And we should have another x-intercept seven spaces over at x equals negative 8. This is just a quick sketch, so I'm not really worried about putting all the tick marks and having everything perfect. You should also know that parabolas are symmetrical. So that means if these are the two roots, that means that those are the two solutions. That, mean, that means that the shape of the parabola needs to go through these two intersection points. And to determine if the parabola is going to open downwards or upwards, you should know that we're going to look at the a value. Whatever is multiplying the x squared is going to tell you whether that parabola is opening upwards or downwards. Since we don't have anything multiplying, that means it's just going to be the normal factor of 1 that's multiplying, which means that this parabola is pretty much going to be the same shape as the parent function. It's just shifted to the left, and it's going to have a y-intercept of 8. So we know that this is going to be the y-intercept, and these are going to be the roots. So now all we have to do is cut a line down the middle for the axis of symmetry, and we need these points to all be connected. And look, if we know what this point is, then if we use the axis of symmetry to say that one space to the right of a root is that point, then one space to the left of the other root will be the symmetrical point to this one. And then if we connect and make it so that the shape of the parabola has the vertex at the axis of symmetry, I kind of missed it, but that's just my angle and this is a sketch, it's, it's okay. So the axis of symmetry should be going through the vertex of the parabola and it should be symmetrical. It should be the same exact shape on the left side of the curve as on the right side of the curve. Okay, So we were able to come up with this graph without making a table, without using a graphing calculator, 
and without doing any complicated questions. And all of this started just from finding these roots, which came by factoring. But if you look at this top question, x squared minus 12x plus 10, if we try to factor this, it would be a 10 on top. It would be a negative 12 on the bottom. Things that multiply to make 10 are 1 and 10. 1 plus 10 does not make 12. If both of these are negative, then negative 1 minus 10 does not make negative 12, which means that we're going to have to pick something different for our factors. If we try the 2 and 5, 2 times 5 makes 10, but they don't add to make 12. They don't add to make the negative 12. If we make them both negative, they still multiply to make 10, but they don't add to make this negative 12. And that's the last of our factors. There's nothing else that multiplies to make 10 that we haven't already tried. So we would say, up to this point, that this quadratic is unfactorable. It's prime. You can't think of anything that's going to factor this perfectly. Well, several hundred years ago, they found a way that you could factor anything. And there's really not that big of a trick to it. It just took a bit of thinking and some checking to make sure that it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to show you this. You will relearn this skill in Algebra 2, but just because of this year, the way that it's kind of weird and the scheduling of everything, I don't have a lot of time and I don't expect you to remember this method of factoring. So that's why I didn't show it to you this year. But there is a method of factoring called completing the square. I've taught you about perfect squares this year, and perfect squares are whenever you have something in parentheses and you have a squared on the outside of it. You'll have an x and then you'll have some number. A perfect square is whenever you can have, whenever you can factor this in a perfect way so that it's just x plus or minus a number squared and then maybe you have something over here as your thing. And if you look at this format where we have a parentheses with a squared and then a plus something else, that's basically vertex form. So what the old mathematicians did is they connected vertex form to a way of factoring. And they said, well, if this doesn't factor just the way that it comes, maybe I can change it so that it is factorable. Maybe I can add something in here besides what it came with because these three terms don't make good factors. What if I put something extra in there and it makes a good factor? And they found, well, if our goal is to have a perfect square as our factors, then and the easiest way to make sure that it works is if you take this middle piece and you cut it in half and then square that if we take half of negative 12 half of negative 12 is a negative 6 and then we square it and we add that then that's going to make it so that this can actually factor nice and neatly as long as we use some of our order of operations I know that this seems a bit crazy because I didn't show you the entire method of this, but because this is an Algebra 1 class, I can't show you everything that makes this work, but I do want to show you that there's a reason why these things happen the way that they happen, and the reason's really cool, and everything's going to work out awesomely. Okay, so all that I did was I added a random 36 because I have a feeling that's going to make this parentheses factorable. I didn't change this plus 10 because I knew that this plus 10 is going to make it so that it's, it doesn't work that great. The factoring won't work that great with that plus 10, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to cut it off with the parentheses, and we'll just have it off on the side. But remember, this we're in algebra now. So whenever we add something random, you can't just add something to one side of the equation without adding it to the other side. So because I added 36 on the left, I'm going to add 36 on the right. So let's look at this. If I try to factor this thing that I have in parentheses, if I just look at what I have in parentheses, then my b is negative 12, my a times c is 36, and what would multiply to make 36 but add to make a negative 12? Things that add to make a negative 12 would be a negative 6 and a negative 6, and negative 6 times negative 6 will multiply to make that 36. 
So then the factors are x minus 6 and x minus 6 plus 10 equals 36. Notice that we have the same factor happening twice. We can abbreviate that. We can combine both of these. That's x minus 6 times x minus 6. That's the same thing multiplying by itself, which means we can write that as x minus 6 squared plus 10 equals 36. Once we get to this part, remember our goal is to solve it for x. And factoring it originally, factoring this original thing didn't work. So then we came up with the idea of, let me add a certain thing so that way I can factor it. We factored it now, and we're trying to solve for x. If I want to solve this for x, then what we can do is we can move this 10 to the other side. If I subtract 10, then on the right side I'll have a 26, and on the left side I'll only have x minus 6 squared. I'm going to rewrite this part on the whiteboard so that way it stands out a little bit better because I'm out of space here. <laughs> we started with the original quadratic. We've modified some things, but we did it equally to both sides. We added 36, and then we subtracted the 10, and we factored the left side to get to this point. Now, remember our goal is to solve for x. We want x by itself, but to get to that x, in the final step, we want x equals we need to get rid of this squared. What's the opposite of squaring something? That would be square rooting it. And if we square root the left side, we need to square root the right side. This, it's not a perfect square, but it's really close. But what we can do is, after we cancel out the square part, we can take the square root of 26 and we can break it down into its prime factors. So 26 comes from 2 and 13, Oh, well that's as far as we can go. 26 can't be broken down anymore because neither of these numbers, neither of these two numbers can be broken down to find a pair. So we're just gonna have to keep that as a square root of 26. X minus six will be equal to the square root of 26. And here's another thing that I didn't really show you that much this year, but whenever you do the square root at this point, you're going to have to change this answer to be a plus or minus. I could explain this to you, but I'll leave that for another time in another video. To get this final answer for x, we'll have to add this 6 to the right side. x will be equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 26. And this is the exact answer for the two roots. One of the roots would be 6 plus square root 26, and the other answer would be 6 minus the square root of 26. If we just use a little bit of estimation, the square root of 26 is just barely bigger than the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 would be the number 5. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than 6 plus 5. So I'm going to do like 6 plus 5.1 to get 11.1. .1. This 6 minus the square root of 26 is going to be a little bit less than 6 minus 5. This is going to be a little bit smaller if I plug this into a calculator than 6 minus 5. So 6 minus 5.1 would be like 0 0.9. That would mean that the roots for this would be on the right side of the x-axis. One of them would be at 11.1, .1, and the other one would be at 0 0.9. Since the original quadratic has an A that's positive, this quadratic is going to open upwards. And we know that there's a y-intercept at 10, so I could put this dot up here. And this is just a quick sketch, so it's not 100% accurate, but this would be the general shape of the parabola. That was a whole lot of things, so let me just point out the really important parts of what I just did. We solved this without graphing it for the x. The x ended up being equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 26. And when was another time where you saw plus or minus? 
with some other number in front? The quadratic formula. So they found out, they thought up a way of, now that we know how we can factor anything, let's just, instead of having specific numbers in that answer, let's use variables so that way we can have a formula that answers anything, any type of question. So in my next video, I'm gonna show you how we would do those same steps, but with variables to solve for the quadratic formula.